Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to let you know we're going to start the meeting in just a few minutes. We're going to allow a few more minutes for folks to um, join the meeting, and we're going to get started in um, just a couple minutes. So good evening, everyone. Uh, just want to get go ahead and get started. We still have a few people joining the meeting, but we'll go ahead and and move forward. Um, thank you all very much for attending tonight. I know you all have very busy schedules, and I really appreciate you being with, here with us tonight. Uh, tonight, the meeting is to take um, scoping comments, or what I call uh, preliminary comments, from the community regarding the notice to prepare an environmental. Uh, impact report for Roseland Creek Community Park. I'm Jen Santos and the Deputy Director for the City of Santa Rosa Parks. And tonight we also have two staff members providing our virtual hosting for us tonight, Elisa and Shelley. They will explain how to provide your comment later in the presentation and of course ass assist and facilitate with this meeting tonight. Next slide, please. We also have interpreter services uh, tonight for today's, uh, uh, in Spanish for today's meeting, provided by Charles and Pablo. Um, so at this time, can our Zoom host explain how the interpreter services will work? Yes, thank you, Jen. Live interpretation can be heard on the Spanish channel. You can join the Spanish channel by clicking on the interpretation icon in Zoom, in the Zoom toolbar. It looks like a globe. 
interpretación en vivo se puede escuchar en el canal de español. Puede unirse al canal de español haciendo clic en el icono de interpretación en la barra de herramientas de Zoom, que ahora aparece como un globo terráqueo. At the time question, questions and answers and public comment, the interpreter on the panel will be prepared to assist anyone needing interpretation. It is recommended that you shut off the main audio so you can clearly hear the Spanish interpretation. Additional instruction will be given at that time. Jen, back to you for additional housekeeping for today's meeting. Bueno, al momento de preguntas y respuestas y comentarios públicos, el intérprete del panel estará preparado para ayudar a cualquier persona que necesite interpretación. Se recomienda que apague el audio principal para poder escuchar claramente la interpretación en español. Eh, se darán instrucciones adicionales en ese momento. Jen, de vuelta a ti para unos asuntos de limpieza adicionales para la reunión de hoy. Great, thank you so much. I appreciate it. So later this evening, you'll have the opportunity to provide your comments regarding the notice of preparation for an environmental impact report. And at that time, you can raise your hand in Zoom if you're participating in Zoom. Uh, and our Zoom host will move, uh, move you one by one down the list of attendees with their hands raised. Once you have shared your input, uh, your comment, the Zoom host will then lower your hand. You will have three minutes for your comment and a timer will appear on the screen. If you have additional comments as time allows and other comments have been heard, we'll do, definitely do our best to allow additional three minutes at the end, allowing for everyone to have their time to speak. Uh, if you are calling in from a telephone, either a smartphone or a landline, for privacy concerns, the host will be renaming you to your viewable phone number to citizen and only the last four digits of your phone number will show for privacy. Uh, additionally, the city of Santa Rosa is committed to providing a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption and will not tolerate hateful speech or actions. Everyone is expected to participate respectfully or if necessary, the meeting will end immediately. Next slide, please. So the meeting tonight is, again, like I said, a scoping meeting whereby we're listening to you tonight and collecting your preliminary comments regarding the notice to prepare an EIR for the Roseland Creek Community Park. I'd like to introduce our two other folks with us tonight uh, from our environmental consultant team, Will Burns from David J. Powers and Associate, and uh, also Con uh, Connor is on the line too. I'll let Will introduce him. Um, they are our environmental consultants for this project, and I'm going to turn this slide over to Will, and he'll describe the meeting and the purpose of our EIR, a, little, a lot more information about it. Right. Great. Thank you, Jen. Um, good evening. My name is Will Burns, and I'm a principal project manager with David J. Powers & Associates. So our firm is assisting the city of Santa Rosa with the preparation of the environmental impact report, or EIR for short, for the Roseland Creek Community Park Master Plan Project. Uh, as Jen mentioned, the purpose of today's meeting is to accept comments from the public regarding the scope of the environmental impact report that will be prepared for the proposed project to construct a new community park to serve the Roseland neighborhood. Uh, the purpose of an EIR is to inform the public and decision makers about potential environmental impacts of a project and also identify mitigation measures and alternatives to reduce or avoid those impacts. Uh, your feedback today will be used to guide how the environmental impact report will be prepared and the EIR will analyze the direct and indirect physical environmental effects of the project on the 20 resource areas identified in the California Environmental Quality Act guidelines. So some of the primary environmental issues anticipated for the project include the potential for biological resources, uh, cultural resources, hazardous materials, and construction impacts to air quality and noise to result from the project. So this meeting is uh, not intended to approve or deny the project. Uh, we're simply here to collect comments um, from the community on the scope of the environmental impact report. And uh, there's additional opportunity to comment. If you, if you don't comment this evening, uh, hopefully you've seen the notice of preparation of the environmental impact report that was published on August 8th and the city will be accepting uh, written public comments on the NOP through September 9th. 
And with that, I'll turn it back over to Jen. Thanks, Will. And as Will mentioned, this is not the only time to participate. So um, if anything, uh, we do have a lot of information at the end on how to get in touch with us and how to communicate outside of this meeting with us about your comments. And of course, uh, Recreation and Parks website is always really helpful. We will get you what you need to provide your comment. If you know somebody that can't attend tonight and would like to provide a comment. Um, so this is our aerial map of the city of Santa Rosa showing the southwest side of Santa Rosa. The park, Rosa Creek Community Park, the project site is uh, highlighted in orange, yellow <laughs> color there. It is south of Highway 12 and west of Highway 101. Next slide, please. And so this is an enlarged or zoomed in look at the project site uh, for Rosen Creek Community Park. It's surrounded on uh, two sides on the north and the um, east side <laughs> by single family homes and on the south by rural residential parcels. Um, you'll see across the creek on Burbank Avenue is Rosen Creek Elementary School. Uh, Rosen Creek does run through the uh, property and the property is outlined here in yellow, of course. Uh, the city acquired this property in phases with assistance from the Sonoma County Agricultural Preservation and Open Space District's matching grant program. Uh, and the park is just under 20 acres in size. And you can see there that we have a lot of oak trees and grasslands. There are also several structures towards the top right corner of the map, as well as in the middle, those were existing houses. Uh, we also have some concrete driveways, gravel driveways, et cetera, as far as structural um, on the existing site. Um, in the last two years, the above ground structures for these homes were removed. And what remains is the concrete foundations or the foundation for the home um, as we move forward. Next slide, please. And this, this is a little bit different than the slide you just saw. It just tilts it to the right so it can fit it on this page. But this is the current proposed master plan project site developed um, uh, over many, many years uh, with community input. And also it does meet the development restriction placed on the site by the Ag and Open Space uh, as part of that matching grant program I mentioned earlier. There are some restrictions for limiting types of paving and impermeable surfaces and similar uh, restrictions. The master plan uh, proposes a nature center, which is that white uh, square kind of in the center left of the, of the project site, uh, along with assist its associated parking lot and the little um, brownish beige areas of the project site are trails and pathways throughout the site. We also have moving down to the south, a, um, uh, we have a restroom building, play area based on a nature theme, um, a parking lot down there on top of an existing gravel driveway um, for access to this side of the park because the creek does bisect the park. We also have irrigated lawn space for, um, for play. Um, not organized play, but just play and picnicking, et cetera. We also have a variety of picnic areas in the middle of the site, as well as in the Southern portion. Um, these are usually just single tables by themselves, um, as well as uh, we have interpretive or educational signage planned for um, alongside the trails on the Southern part and middle part of the, actually all around the park really, it's those orange dots all around. and. Again, this is a plan. Um, it's an idea. It's not. Um, it's not a construction plan. This was. Um, these are things we heard from the community, um, and we do plan to put those interpretive signages into um, the community. Requested three languages to be used for that, so we're excited to do that. Um, there are um, two pedestrian bridges crossing the creek there, and. I call this line, it's yellow and beige, looks like a snake. It is um, 
it is the multi-purpose trail. It's really bicycles and pedestrians on there. Um, we also have a sport court as part of the parking lot, as well as a um, outdoor classroom or community garden kind of in the middle to the right, um, whatever ends up being developed there or subversion thereof. The, ma the master plan overall is designed to preserve and enhance the habitat values of the existing grassland, oak woodland, riparian and purple needle grass habitat, uh, which would be left of course intact and interpreted about its importance and would also contain the park would contain the trails and educational signage. There's also the little green squares on the plan are fitness trails a lot. I mean, fitness stations next to the trails so that you can get a little bit higher activity level um, in that only on that southern part of the park. Um, and the park is also, of course, intended to be developed for all access. Um, and of course, to limit the amount of paving and keep and interpret the natural aspect of the, of the park. Next slide, please. So as we, as Will and I mentioned earlier, this, this meeting tonight is to take any comments you have as we are going into the uh, producing the EIR in the future. We wanna hear from you. We're getting, trying to get out ahead of that EIR to hear from you tonight to see if before we start um, delving into that too far, what sort of comments would you have for us early on? And so I am going to turn it back over to our host to explain uh, how to participate in the pu public comment portion of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. A countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and viewers. The first speaker will be acknowledged and invited to speak. Please make sure to unmute yourself when you are invited to do so. Your microphone will be muted at the end of the countdown or at the conclusion of your comment. If you're participating in the meeting from the Spanish channel in Zoom, you have an interpreter on standby in the English channel to assist during your public comment. If you wish to ask a question or provide input, please be sure to pause throughout your comments to allow for interpretation. Those using interpreter support will be afforded additional time for your comments. For Spanish speakers, at the time you hear your name called, turn off the Spanish channel to make your public comment. This icon may now look like a circle with an ES in the middle and the word Spanish underneath. You will have three minutes for your comment and a timer will appear on the screen. If you have additional comments as time allows and all other comments have been heard, we will do our best to allow an additional three minute comment. I do not currently have any hands raised. All right, thank, thank you. Oh, we do have one. And before we, before we take that, I just wanted to skip a tiny bit ahead just to, to let you know, kind of we'll have uh, the fuller scope of the entire process coming up after these comments. So we'll go over that and we'll have contact information for you as well for, for following this. But. I'll turn it back to our host for continue on with our comment. Thank you. Gregory, we're going to um, ask you to go ahead and talk. Please unmute yourself. Thank you. My name is Gregory Farron, and I think you just answered my question, which is um, I publicly comment on lots of things, but I usually wait for someone to suggest something I should comment on uh, to give me a chance to be able to, um, you know, to provide you some feedback. and. So far, everything's been so temporary or it's so tentative. You know, you, I know that you've come up with a plan. I know you're going to do an EIR, but none of it is specific enough or controversial enough or even questionable enough for me to even comment on. So I think I'll just uh, wait until that time and comment then. I appreciate that. And I understand it's not a lot of information, but we like to. Um, you know, it's not necessarily a requirement, but we like to get out ahead of uh, producing. So we, if by chance there is something uh, we should be aware of or any comment whatsoever, we'll happily um, take that in and, um, and go from there. So I see we have one more 
from a person. I'll turn it back to our host. Thank you, Wendy. We're going to ask you to unmute. Thank you. Um, my name is Wendy. I have a quick question um, on the impact of traffic um, when construction or work gets started. Will it be coming from Hearn Avenue? If it does, that concerns me because there is a huge amount of traffic with all the construction that's going on in this area that I'm seeing way more trucks on her and making it more difficult. As school starts, there's times that it's hard to pull out onto her. And, and I'm hoping, requesting that a lot of the trucks or traffic that's needed for the park to be done from Burbank. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, thank you, Wendy. I appreciate it. And um, certainly we're not looking at, you know, possible construction until late next year at the earliest. Um, but it's a really good point that we can take into consideration as we get closer to that. And I don't know, Will, if you had anything else. Or, we're good. Okay. So got a couple more. Hunter, we're going to ask you to unmute. Hey, yeah. Um... The uh, McMinn Street currently has a lot of potholes. It's a, it's a mess. And so I would just want to make sure that there's a plan at some point. I mean, I'm sure the construction trucks driving down that and the additional traffic coming to the park is just going to make that worse. Um, so I want to make sure that there's a plan at some point to, to repave that street, given how much impact this is going to have on that. The other thing is, and I, I have no idea if this belongs in this forum, um, but there's a lot of kids that, that, and this has probably already been said because I'm just joining this project now, but there's a lot of kids that, that ride their bikes or, or walk their bikes across the field currently from the, the school on the other side. And so the current design doesn't look like it's, I mean, I, I see that there's a multi-use trail, um, but you may want to consider if, if the funding allows for it, paving an additional trail to cross the park. I get that we're trying to save nature here, but they're going to use it regardless. And so we, I would want to make sure that that trail isn't destroyed by bikes and just plan for that ahead of time. Um, and then thinking specifically of the trail out of the, um, the, the parking lot that's on the left, it doesn't look like that one's a multi-use trail and you might want to consider making that such. Thanks. Thank you, Hunter. Thank you. And just to, I, I heard you about McMinn. We'll definitely circle back with our public works folks to see what their plans are for that um, street. And there is going to be a trail connecting McMinn to Burbank and then across Burbank. I think I probably forgot to mention that part when we were going through that. Um, and it'll be a flashing light. And it, it, it's proposed to be a paved, permeable paved some sort of paved surface to kind of help with um, all access to the park. So I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Thank you, Janelle. Go ahead and unmute. Hi, I, um, I'm Janelle and I live um, just around the corner from this park. Um, and we're excited about the design of the park. Um, I have a young son and He's already talked, he's watching the meeting and he's very excited about all the things that he sees in the park. Um, I think the thing that I, um, there are a lot of homeless people that are living there, um, either in RVs along McMinn or kind of in the woods. Um, and so I think the environmental impact report usually analyzes the impact of do the development, but there's an impact to not doing the development as well because the you know, allowing the homeless people to continue. And, um, and the other question I have is, how are we, how are you planning to make sure that the park stays nice once it's there? Because um, that is an issue right now. We will walk on the fire road, but we, uh, we don't walk in the little trails in the woods just because there are a lot of, there are people living back there and it feels a little weird. Um, so um, yeah, that's all. Thanks. Thanks, Janelle. I appreciate it. And I'll just 
I, I have a website, I'm gonna say it, but um, it's also something you can look up on the city's website. Uh, it's called homeless at srcity.org. And that's one way you can help um, report if there's an issue at the park. We definitely wanna know about it and um, we don't wanna document what's happening there and appreciate that um, even folks parked along the park would be good to have that information. Uh, to the folks that need to see it. There's a multidisciplinary crew that's looking at those uh, comments that come through. Um, and so I, with regard to the EIR, I don't know, Will, if you want to add anything there, but otherwise, Janelle, thank you. Yeah, I, I would just add that the that um, Janelle's correct that we're looking at the direct physical impacts of development of the park. So um, I think we did, uh, note previously and in the master plan that the park um, gates are going to be locked in the evening, you know, per standard um, city practice. So, Thank you. John, we're going to ask you to unmute. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm uh, John's wife. Um, my husband and I live on Hughes Avenue, and we have been... Um, with this uh, committee for probably 30 years now, trying to keep this um, acreage behind us um, as a nature park. Um, we had it all decided. There were many, many meetings. And now all of a sudden it's totally changed. I'm kind of wondering where those plans went to, uh, to keep this a nature park, to uh, prevent people from having a bathroom here where, that will only draw more homeless. Um, and not have a parking lot for the homeless because you're basically inviting them in. Um, we have a lot of traffic. We have a lot of homeless. There's been fires, all sorts of stuff. And I am pretty concerned about this type of uh, development in my backyard. That's it. So thank you, appreciate that comment and uh, we'll include that. and. You know, also we had some additional contact information if you want, I'm not exactly sure um, what plan you might be talking about. We've had a, definitely about 11 years worth of changes to the plan and what was gonna happen there. So we can always, you know, happy to talk with you a little bit further and, and get that information out to you. And then Will, I didn't know if you had anything else or are we good there? Okay. All right, thank you, J Jody. We're gonna ask you to unmute yourself. Hi, I just, um, we have property south of the uh, proposed park. And um, I also um, live in Roseland and frequently go through the Southwest Community Park on Hearn. And I'm curious, if you don't enforce the rules at that park, how are you gonna enforce the rules at this park? There's an area that I feel very uncomfortable and I walk through in the morning because there's people who have actually like permanent furniture there and they're there every day and rules aren't enforced. I mean, yeah, it's supposedly closed at night, but there's people there. Um, and I don't know how you're going to enforce the rules at this park if you don't enforce the rules at the other park. Thank you, Jody. I appreciate that. And I totally understand it's it's a problem all across the city for us as we are doing our best with many departments um, uh, participating as well as police for enforcement and maintenance for keeping up as best as we can. We have about 15 to 17 maintenance folks plus um, we have a contract for mowing services but everything else is provided by the city's team right now. So we're doing the best we can to keep up with everything we certainly can. Um, South, you know, the Roseland Creek, as Will mentioned earlier, is proposed to have gates locked. So that's helpful for us and other parks where we do that is really helpful to um, con control that kind of activity. Whereas Southwest, it's a little different. Um, and Southwest, it's not, you know, that's a park also that um, was developed many, many years ago and is due for a, a bit of an update itself as well. So. We can definitely talk a little bit more as we go through. And if you'd like to talk further with me, I do have time um, and contact information as well. So thank you for that. Uh, 
Um, we have no hands raised at this time. Oh, Wendy, we're going to go ahead and ask you to unmute and allow you three more minutes. Thank you. Um, I meant to ask, um, you'd mentioned that it's all access that you're going to be providing on those trails. Um, I have a disability, sometimes needing to use cane, sometimes I've had to use a walker. And I'm wondering if by all access, this is what it's is meant that I could use those and how much of the trails will be, have that ability. And thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Yes, that I, you know, thanks for that question for me to clarify that. Yes, all access means persons with um, disabilities can um, access those trails. So we're looking at hard paved surfaces of some sort so that it's a stable surface for uh, those needing it uh, for all of our uh, primary trails. We might have some secondary trails that are more natural in, in uh, to what's there now uh, made by folks so we can leave those as is. But all of our primary trails throughout and looping throughout the park so that we'll have all access in all areas so that it'll be equal access for, for those who need it throughout the park. But there may be a few little tiny spur trails here and there. Um, that are left as is. So hopefully that helps. All right, Barbara, we're gonna ask you to unmute. Um, I was curious as to uh, what the time frame is, how long the environmental impact report will take, and then um, how an idea of how many decades it would take to actually start doing the work. And also a, a second question is um, there many years ago there were, in the plan, there was a Native American display. And I know the EIR talked about the cultural impacts and I wondered what happened to that and if anything's um, further will be developed about that. Thank you. Appreciate that. And so the, I'll, I'll circle back with Will about the exact more, you know, closely with the timeline, but we're looking um, at uh, January, targeting January to um, move through this environmental process. Um, and then from there, we've got quite a bit of additional work to do with um, getting the, the project ready. And then construction will be later next year at the earliest. Uh, we do have a requirement from the Ag the Sonoma County Ag and Open Space District to build that northern trail from McMinn to from Bur yeah McMinn to Burbank over to the school, and we really want to do that so that we can provide that safe travels you know route to school for students and anybody else accessing that. And we are very eager to do that project, and so uh, that'll be the first thing we do. And from there, we'll look at what sort of funding we have to go from there. Um, and let's see, I think I might have, so I'll turn back to Will for maybe if there's anything to correct in my timeline there. No, I think that timeline's accurate. Yeah, draft DIR towards the end of the year, January timeframe. Okay, and Barbara, I think I might have missed your other, remind me if I missed, if I answered your question and if not, I'll circle back or will do you remember yeah I, there was a question about um a potential native american display oh. okay and i believe there was some consultation done with tribes uh, in developing right. the plan right you you are correct and thanks for that i thought i wrote it down but i couldn't read my own writing so yes we did contact uh two tribal nations who provided us really good feedback on what they requested um, our, our originally about eight years ago, there was an idea of a of a uh, tribal um, area, and so we asked our tribal nations what they would like to see there, and they um, expressed that they would not like to see that, but they instead would like to see um, access for elders. They would like the trees along the creek to be um, identified as species, the species type. They also were requesting water, uh, aka drinking fountains, fire with barbecues and places for picnicking that they could enjoy in the park. Um, we also would look to provide interpretive services 
Um, if our tribal nations would be open to that, we would love to work with them to uh, provide any sort of historical documentation of their tribal lands, their former tribal lands at anything we would like to definitely work with our tribal nations. But that's what we've received so far. We may receive more feedback from our tribal nations as we move forward, but we are open to working with our, our nations out there and look forward to it. All right, any further comments? I have no hands raised at this time. All right, Jen, we'll turn this back over to you. All righty, thank you so much. Uh, let's go ahead and go on to slide eight or the next slide. <laughs> and so I, again, I just wanna thank you all. Um, I know it's very, very preliminary, but it's really important for us to hear from you early on. And you'll have many other opportunities to provide your comments as you think about the project and hear about it as we go forward. Um, as Will mentioned, we are looking at September 9th as the date where we're collecting all of our comments from all of you tonight, as well as folks who are writing and calling in with comments. Um, the next step, of course, is Will's team will be preparing the envir draft environmental impact report. Um, it will be that report then will be available for comments for 45 days. Um, and um, the, we will also part of the final EIR that's prepared will, um, or the draft final pre, <laughs> Uh, EIR will provide comments um, back in part as part of that draft EIR um, responses to comments that we receive um, during the entire timeline for that. Um, we do anticipate city council review of the EIR um, in January, if not sooner, if we can get through all of our steps in time. Um, there's a lot to do um, with this with this project. Um, and there is a website. It's srcity.org forward slash Roseland Creek Community Park. That website will contain all of our updated information and what's going on with the project at all times. Of course, you can always call us as well. Um, will, did you have anything else to add here about our next steps processes? Um, no, I think you've you've addressed it. The, the draft EIR really is uh, following the NOP comment period that ends September 9th, that's the next opportunity for the community to provide the city comments on the EIR. And then those those will be addressed uh, as part of the final EIR. We'll respond to any comments uh, on the content of the draft EIR. So that's accurate. <laughs> Thank you, Will, I appreciate it. All right, let's roll to our next slide, please. And so this is the contact information I was mentioning earlier on, um, certainly we definitely want to hear from you. Um, and my email is J S A N T O S, that's J Santos at srcity.org. And of course, my phone number and the city's website I mentioned earlier are available, or you can always just call Recreation and Parks and they'll we'll get you uh, what you need a comment form and or just uh, take down your comment for you from there. Um, thanks again for your participation tonight. I know it was a really quick one uh, with just uh, collecting information, but certainly we're available if you would like to communicate further. I know there was a couple of you that mentioned a few more detailed information and maybe those are worth a longer conversation and I'm available for those as well. So with that, I will thank you all very much for your attendance tonight and have a nice evening. Thank you. <laughs>